So you are trying to animate your UI. You want it to look great, and it does. Except that no one likes it. Well, not anymore, because today we are talking about nine principles of UI animation. So let's step back a bit. Why nine principles? Well, wise people are saying that there were 12 principles of animations established back then in 20th century in Walt Disney Studio to make the cartoons look like cartoons. Everyone likes cartoons, but how is it going to help me in my work, you might ask? I'm telling you guys, almost all of these principles are perfectly applicable in UI. Let me show you how. And I'll start with the first one, squash and stretch. Here, instead of keeping the circle geometry, we have a chance to emphasize the movement by adding the stretch effect. Keep in mind that it depends on the brand character. If the brand is portraying very corporate and professional look, maybe this is not the best principle to apply. Anticipation. The tiles are animating from right to left, letting users to anticipate the horizontal movement of those tiles. This increases usability by teaching users the behavior of the app. Staging. Staging allows to draw users' attention to certain element of the UI at the time. So here, for example, you can see that the CTA button is coming after all of this information is loaded because you don't want to come up with the CTA button before the image even expands. So it gives you this nice hierarchy of the read pattern. First, the tile expands, then you see like this expanded image, then you see the description, and then at the end, you show the CTA. Follow through and overlapping action. This rule allows to emphasize the physical rules further by adding the slight bounce animation. Again, you need to be careful using this to not make it look too cartoonish. And this again ties back to your brand values and character. Slow in and slow out. This, in my opinion, is one of the main principles, if not the main one. If you apply this principle correctly in the UI animation, it's gonna be like so, so much better. Nothing in real world gains the speed in no time. So you need to try to replicate that in your UI as well. So the general rule of thumb is that if the object is coming inside the frame from the outside, you want to slow it down. And I'm showing the curve here, how the curve would look like. So at the start, you can see that it's fast and then it's slowing down at the end very smoothly. So this curve is not just the native or the default one, which is being used when you have like ease in or ease out, but this is more like the custom one because this makes it more exaggerated. So this is the first one when you move in the frame. If the object is moving from one place to other and it's still keeping within the frame, you want to apply ease in and ease out or acceleration and slow down at the same time and again you can see that the curve is quite uh, extreme in the middle that will allow you to really make it smooth and the last one is if the object is going out of the frame you just want to slowly accelerate it and as you can see the fastest point is going to be the last frame of this animation arc Typically, the natural objects are moving in arc due to gravitational or any other forces preventing from the straight movement. So if you want your animation to look a bit more natural, you can apply this principle. But if the brand dictates more professional look, you can also try to keep it straight, just like the mechanical objects uh, moving in the perfect straight line. Timing. So depending on the type, the duration of the animation is going to be different. So if the animation is very small and uh, functional, like the button or the toggle, 
you want to make it very fast, like 70 milliseconds or something like that. Then if it's something a little bit bigger, so the travel distance is a bit more, like the expansion of the accordion, it's going to be around 150 milliseconds. Then there is the third one, which is even bigger travel of the object, or let's say the transition between two states. So here you can see that this image is increasing its size, and it takes around 250 milliseconds to do that. And then you have the rest of the objects loading, just keeping something around maximum 300 milliseconds for that is a good option. And then if you have something more emotional, if you have a chance to celebrate some moment, you can take uh, around 700 or even more. And sometimes you just want to make the animation last as long as there is some background loading of the app happening. So that might be even longer. Secondary action. The secondary action helps to sell the main action. So for example, in this toggle, you can see that the background of this toggle is turning to green. So by itself, it's not the main action, but it helps to convey the message that this toggle is on. So the last one is exaggeration. You can apply the exaggeration in certain places, not to everything, not to every animation, but in a place where it's appropriate to celebrate the brand, to celebrate the action, and to delight the user. Take your time to define those moments, and that will really make it like a cherry on top. So now it's your turn to apply these principles in your videos and make them look really good that everyone likes them this is my first ever youtube video finally i made it by the way my name is tamerlan aziv i'm a senior visual designer at accenture interactive dubai office and also i'm a design jury at awards hopefully you found this video useful if you did smash that like button subscribe to my channel for new videos and see you soon